Euclid is uh, one of the oldest mathematician. He was a Greek mathematician who gave us a very potent uh, way of finding out the greatest common divisors <coughs> among two or more elements or two or more numbers. So what he essentially did was, if you see with the help of an example, let's say I'm trying to find out what's the GCD of 48 and 72. So what essentially he said is keep the smaller number intact and subtract the smaller number from the larger number. So I'm keeping 48 which is the smaller number intact and subtracting 48 from 72. Now I, I must repeat this process again. Now my smaller number is 24. So I'll keep 24 intact and I'll subtract 24 from 48. So this is 24 as well. Now I will go on repeating this process unless I get both the values, both the elements as same. As in this case, I have both the elements as 24. So I stop or terminate the process right here. And the GCD equals the common value which is equal to 24. So before we understand what is happening here and go into the essence of it, let's take another example. Let's say if we try to find out the GCD of 32 and 68. So 32 is my smaller number. Let's keep it intact and take away 32 from 68. So this is 36. Then I have 32. Thir take away 32 from 36. It's 4. Now 4 is my smaller number. So keep that intact and take away a 4 from 32. So this is 28. Now this will keep repeating because this difference will be higher than 4 anyways. So next number will be 24 comma 4, then 20 comma 4, then 16 comma 4, then 16 minus 4 is 12, 12 comma 4, 8 comma 4, 4 comma 4. Now we terminate our process because we encounter both the numbers as same. So the value, the greatest common divisor is 4. Now, let's understand what essentially has been has happened, you know, in subsequent uh, steps here. Why did we subtract the smaller number from the larger number? What essentially is happening is, if you see the, co let's take the example number one first. If you see the common factors of 48 and 72, these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 20 24, right? So, so these are the common factors. Now, even if I subtract 48 from 72, or even if I add 48 to 72, these set of this set of common factors will not suffer any change. So, even if I have a 48 comma 24 after I take out 48 from 72. What are the common factors of 48 and 24? It's still 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12 and 24. It still remains the case. Now in the subsequent step when I take one more 24 out of 48 and I'm le left with 24 comma 24, still the common factors are still the same. On 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 24 still remain the common factors of 24 comma 24. And here we terminate the process because we know that among the in this set of common factors the highest factor is 24 so that becomes my answer essentially this is what we are doing in my next example when I took 32 and 68 the, the common factors were 1 2 4 that's it only three common factors so at any subsequent step let's say I'm talking about this step then what are the common factors here 1 2 4 and that's it so basically and so is the case with the last step 1 2 and 4 so basically if you observe the n the factors the fa the common factors of the original two numbers do not suffer any change in any subsequent process till the last step so if that is the case i can always say that we can always say now i'm going to define and now i'm going to give you the statement for euclid's algorithm which says GCD of A comma B will be equal to GCD of A comma B minus A if B is greater than A. 
so if two numbers are there whose gcd is to be found out a comma b so gcd of a comma b is equal to gcd of smaller number comma bigger number minus the smaller number so this is essentially what we have done the statement is this and this is what essentially we have seen when we took those two examples whenever I am subtracting the smaller number from the bigger number and taking the GCD you know with the smaller number I am still considering those that set of common factors only this the set of common factors does not change and that's why I can still say the GCD in this case as well will be the same GCD as it was with the original two numbers now let me take this one step further let me take this statement one step further I am trying to again write GCD of a comma B but this time I'll change it a bit I'll change it a bit GCD of a comma B let's write it as GCD of the smaller number comma instead of b minus a now I'm going to write the remainder when b is divided by a b modulo a is same as the remainder when b is divided by a so essentially why I am writing that what makes me write this why I write this is because it has got some significance and, and you will appreciate when I relate to the, this problem see what is happening here is if you consider this step and after this step you see that the difference is huge between 32 and 4 and I have to do so many subsequent steps in order to reach the final step you see there are so many intermediate steps from here to here now I don't want to repeat this and uh, uh, again and again I want to bypass all this and reach to the final step in one go only now what finding a remainder does is it it reduces this gap you know to the maximum extent it reduces this gap to the maximum extent just imagine I'm taking out this 32 comma 4 here and trying to see what is GCD of 32 comma 4 and I'm saying that keep the smaller value intact and find the remainder of the bigger value with the smaller value so what exactly is this GCD 32 gives a remainder of 0 with 4 and 4 is there so GCD of 0 comma 4 and GCD of any number with 0 is the number itself so 4 4 is the GCD now thing is that we are we are already bypassing all these intermediate steps here and directly re reach, reaching to the last step here also I had 4 comma 4 in the next step it could be written as GCD of 0 comma 4 which is the same as 4 so since you know 32 is exactly divisible by 4 so you you got 0 here let's take another example wherein uh, the, the number is not exactly divisible by the smaller number and gives some remainder so let's consider that case also that will give you a clearer idea so let me make some space So, so what I was saying is, if I take an example, GCD, let's say six comma eight, and let me in, let me try to use the second uh, equation. <coughs> GCD of six comma eight. Let me keep intact the smaller value, which is six, and I'm trying to now find the remainder when eight is divided by six. So this is nothing but GCD of six comma. What's the remainder when eight is divided by six? now see what I am essentially doing is taking out number of sixes from eight what how many maximum sixes can I take from eight that is what I am doing whenever I am trying to find the remainder of eight with six so I am bypassing all the steps that will this eight is very close to six so the one process directly gets me here if I had a very big number just uh, understand here first of all that any number that is divided by 6 will only result in uh, remon remainders as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 these are the only possible uh, values of remainders when number is divided by 6 so so the result of this this can never be greater than or equal to 6 
So the number that I'm going to get will be less than six and then that number will become my smaller number like in case of this this example two two becomes the smaller number and then I can shift the process so thing is that I am reducing the gap between the between the numbers the original numbers by taking the remainder now if you see I can write the next step as GCD of two is intact being a smaller number six mod two so this is essentially 6 is an even number so GCD of 0 comma 2 which is 2 itself now we reverse this process because my smaller number had changed so the importance of this is whenever you get a smaller number at any step here my smaller number was the first number and as soon as I used a modulo sign or find out found out the remainder my smaller number became the second number so this is the way you know why uh, how we s uh, see the usage of this second statement <coughs> so